Hey everyone, this is Michael from Barton Musical Circuits. Uh, this is the new NOR subharmonizer module. Uh, this is a four channel module. Uh, there's one audio input, uh, which it's best to input a ramp wave there, uh, and or a sawtooth wave. And then it uh, has four outputs. Uh, each has its own individual output, and then a mix. Uh, and what this does is you're inputting a saw wave and it's outputting saw waves. Uh, and this is setting the frequency of it, but these saw waves are only going to re-trigger once a new wave gets input, uh, which sounds a little confusing, which is why I have the uh, oscilloscope up here. So I'm gonna put a wave in here. And so as you can see, uh, well, this on the bottom, this is our input, uh, and this is our output, and the input signal is actually inverted because I have an inverter uh, in my signal chain somewhere. Um, but, so I'm going to increase the frequency of our input, and you're seeing that it's following it. And this is with the frequency set to the highest level, so then I'm going to turn this down a little. And you can see as the period increases, it'll actually divide the input down. And so uh, the amount it's dividing is also going to be dependent on what the input frequency is versus uh, the frequency that the channel's set to. So as I turn this down, it goes from dividing by 3 to dividing by 2 to eventually dividing by 1 as the input frequency lowers. So it has a frequency that it really wants to hit, but that's being altered by the input frequency. So uh, whether it's a harmonizer or a resonator, I, I wasn't quite sure how to label it, but um, that's what it's doing. And then the other control that uh, affects all four channels is the tight control. So right now it's waiting till this uh, input, or it's waiting till the output signal gets all the way low and then it's waiting for a new input signal that re-triggers it. Uh, by turning up the tight control, we're gonna make it so it can re-trigger uh, when the input doesn't isn't as low. Uh, so this is gonna have it re-trigger more often, but uh, it's also going to make the output signal uh, have less amplitude. So I'll turn that up a little bit. And so you can see now the the wave size is a lot smaller, but it's tracking that input properly. Uh, but it still is allowing it to divide, it's just going to require a, uh, a higher frequency. Like, it's, it's changing the ratios at which it divides. So you can see that went from dividing by 2 to dividing by 4 uh, just by changing the tight control. Um, and then there's also a, a CV input for modulating the tight control. Um, so you can have it so at the start of when you hit your note, it's very tight, and then it like divides down as your uh, CV, as your envelope like goes down. Uh, and then let's do the mix. The mix is going to have uh, an inverted output. Uh, let me get the inverted button there. Uh, and so... So especially if you're using the mix output, uh, using CV on the tight control, um, you get something like this, where it goes from a very harmonized to a very, uh, or actually I should say a very unison to a strange harmonic, uh, and some semi-random uh, harmonic. Yeah, um, so thank you for watching. Uh, also, uh, I'm going to note that I'm using a new output module, which I'm releasing at the same time. I'm not going to do a whole video on this because it's just something that converts signal. 
uh, but this is 4 HP wide and uses a DB25 connector on the back, so I've got a snake uh, with DB25 on one side that's going uh, straight from, you know, there's one cable that plugs in here that then goes all the way to my interface, and it really cuts down on the number of cables, and it makes it so I have a lot more uh, free panel space in the front, uh, and then it uses trim pots on the board to set the level. So it's less messing around and being able to accidentally turn something where it's going to distort. Um, but you need to have a case like mine where you have a, it's empty in the, where there's no back panel to it, uh, or you'd need to cut a hole in the back panel to do that. And I've also got those boards available, just wire pads. If you wanted to uh, just put some XLR jacks on the back of your modular system. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, uh, and uh, have a great day.